Hey guys and welcome back to the channel, it's Sketch Monkey here back at Audi Denver to have a look at a 2023 Audi A3. So when I grew up, Audi A3s, they were sort of these small little hatchbacks. They still make the hatchback and they're sold over in Europe and across the world. But here in the US, we only get the sedan version, which is totally fine because it still looks pretty decent. Specifically when you have the black optics package on it like we have right here. So what we're going to do in this video is have a look at this design, obviously the front end, chiseledness, sharpness, blacked out feeling that we have, the side view, the rear, the interior, and then we're going to take this for a drive. Let's have a look at some of the basic spec and tech of the 2023 Audi A3. You have a 2 liter turbo 4 putting a 201 horsepower, 221 pound feet of torque connected to a 7 speed dual clutch transmission. It comes with quattro all wheel drive, 0 to 60 takes 6.3 seconds. Fuel economy comes in at 28 city and 38 highway and the price for this is $41,000. So starting with the front end design of the brand new 2023 Audi A3 sedan, it looks of course exactly the same in the front end of the sedan like it does in the hatchback. So this is kind of a review of both, I guess. You have this big headlight. For some reason, when this first came out, I thought the headlights look maybe a little too big for the overall proportions. And when you have it this big, it's just, it's just gonna shrink the overall dimensions in the front end generally. But as I've seen it now in real life, a lot of times out on the road and now right here in front of me, it kind of feels right to have it like this. We have this dip here in the headlight itself with another LED. And this is what I'm talking about when you have the sibling setup in the lineup. You have the small sibling, middle, big brother, and then you have the grandfather. So when you have the small brother, you can do some fun styling to the designs more so than if you were to design, for example, an A8 or an Q8 or something like that. This feels fun, but still very Audi in its design. Now looking at the line flow that we have in the front end, I do love these lines that we have in the hood. You can see two lines, one line here that as on the A4 and the uh, A5 as well, fades right be before it meets the grill because there's a reason for that because it doesn't have any connection to any graphics right here like this big line at the side has. You can see that this is connected. It even shows the uh, co line continuing into the grill and connecting to this very corner. So I like that they did that. They faded out the, the lines that doesn't have a connection and the lines that do have connection just added some even more sharpness to it. When it comes to the front faces of Audis these days, it's, they have, a, of course, a very strong brand identity. You instantly know, first of all, this grill, you have the uh, headlight, uh, LED lighting on the Audis. You, there's no way you can mistake this for anything else in an Audi. In one way, that's a good deal because you know the identity, DNA is right there, but at the same time, is it getting too close to each other? Is Audi creatively struggling now a little bit to come up with some new ideas for their designs? I think they might. We have this intake, it looks like an intake, but there's nothing open here, so this is all fake. What this does, it has this grill pattern, the same pattern that we have right here, and it also houses the tiny little parking sensor up here. But I do think it looks good because I do think that we need some type of graphic on the lower section down here too complement the big grill in the front end. Looking at the Audi A3 from a straight front view, it does definitely have this chiseledness that is part of Audi's design language right now. And I think it looks good. There's nothing wrong with it. But as I said, I think it's time that they put in some more effort into what is next for Audi, the next generation. What, what is that going to look like? And implement some of those features into their new cars. I do like everything that goes on here, specifically with the black optics package, meaning that it blacks out this piece down here and everything that goes on in the grille, even the logo itself. Coming around to the side view, and this, in my opinion, could have been an S3 not that long ago, thanks to the very wide and shielded looking fenders. Have a look at this line here, for example, cutting into the wheel arch and then creating this triangular shape right here, adding some additional width to the rear end of the uh, right of the rear axle, looking fantastic. We also have pretty wide fenders in the front end. It looks super sporty and at the same time very chiseled again, like we have in the front end, because you have to have that congruency in the design of the car. Talking about the wheels and tires, we have two 25 millimeter wide tires all around. This is an all wheel drive with the gorgeous, very cool and sharp. It feels like I, I can cut myself when I you know, touch these wheels. 
looking wheels. 18 inch wheels with 225 millimeter wide tires all around looking fantastic. And have a look at this gorgeous line. This is typical Audi. I've talked about this before, but having this cut line in the lower section, this being a lot more pronounced in the younger sibling, the A3, than it is in the A4 and the A5. And I think it looks really good. You know, designing a small sedan like this and make the proportions look nice and have a nice line flow in it is not easy because the smaller, the shorter the car is, the less space you have to drag out these beautiful lines. If you look at Rolls Royces, they look very stately and have these very long lines across the entire body. So it's harder to do it on, an out, on a small sedan like this. But I think the A3 still looks very nice because we have this sharp shoulder line that thankfully they didn't cut up in single piece in separate pieces but it stretches from the very corner of the headlight into the corner of the taillight or into the trunk and what this does is helping this smaller proportions and help it stretch it out visually and create some very nice proportions even if it is a smaller sedan. Coming around to the three-quarter rear view of the 2023 Audi uh, A3 and the first thing I notice is just this subtle upswing right here in the trunk into this gorgeous chamfer into this curvature where the Audi logo sits in the black version that we have in this uh, A3 spec. Looking fantastic. The one thing when this first came out, specifically the RS3, that I wasn't too sure about, that I think actually looks better here, is this section. So we have these fake vents. Again, same like we have in the front end. They just house the parking sensors. That's it. But in the RS3, it's a lot bigger and this section, the black piece, is bigger in the, uh, in the lower section, dragging the, the sides of the bumper visually, dragging them down on the ground. Here, they're a lot smaller, and I would like to have this integration on the RS3 as well, of course, with the different diffusers and the exhaust that we have on the RS3, but I do prefer this overall bumper of the A3 over the RS3. I just love the tail ends of the sport bags of Audis these days and the sedans, obviously, because of these chamfers, this subtle little ducktail up top with this chamfer for the logo and the head, the tail light, the integration of the LEDs, the single elements of this, the, this tail light look static to me because they're very squarish, very sharp. But when you put everything together and you look at it from a, a different perspective, it still has some dynamic feeling to it. In this case, you have these being stretched out onto the side and then you have this big long piece of LED in uh, stretching into the middle, creating this movement in the overall taillight design. And then of course you do have the LED indicator right here at the bottom looking absolutely fantastic. Now looking at the A3 from a straight rear view as you're doing right now, I do love that this chamfer right here, this is actually the shoulder line. So if you follow this line around the bend, it continues all the way to the very front end to the corner of the headlights. Very beautifully done, but overall, this has the potential of being a very planted looking design. The only thing is though, the 225 millimeter wide rear tires. I know it's what, you know, for a consumer A3, it's not even the S3. 225, it's fine to have, but for, from a visual standpoint and design standpoint, I wanna have them be a little wider just to plant the car a tad bit more than what we have right here. Welcome to the interior of the 2023 Audi. A3 and it is a fantastic as always with new Audi's interior right here. Let's click the start button. Let's fire it up. So what do we have when it comes to the connect uh, the, the screens in here? We have the same layout as you have in a lot of different Audis. Digital gauge cluster, which is completely configurable. And we have a 10.1 inch infotainment screen that in this case, having it right here compared to, for example, the A4 and the uh, A5, this to me in the smaller sibling actually feels a little better integrated because it sits within this panel instead of just sitting up top right here. And these vents also a very different approach for the small sibling here than the bigger ones, the A4 and the A5, because we have two vents located right here, right in front of the passenger with this chamfer or shelf that we don't have in the other uh, sedans. We also have the uh, Audi logo here. It doesn't say Quattro, but instead we do have the Audi rings. And then you have these very industrial looking vents up top here next to the gauge cluster itself 
pretty cool integration of, of these vents. And if I feel like the, the interior designer uh, had some fun designing this interior, yes, he may, might have used a ruler a lot to sketch this up, but the integration, the position of the different, different things look very funky to me. Let's have a look at this 10.3 inch infotainment screen. Let's see what's going on here. We don't have the navigation license purchased for this car, so we can't check out the navigation. We can check out, for example, let's go in to a vehicle. Let's see what we got here. Audi Drive Select. We still have the same drive modes like we have in the sportier versions, meaning we have Comfort, Auto, Dynamic, or Individual. Click the little Edit button next to Individual, and you can edit it and have it set up exactly like you want. Then we have this gloss black on the sides of the infotainment screen. Not a huge fan in any uh, situation of gloss black, but since it kind of melts into the screen uh, surface, it looks pretty decent in this case. I do like the integration down here of the uh, climate control settings because it's very easy. You have the temperature right here. You don't have knobs for it in this case in the A3. And you have the toggle for the fan speed, the type of AC you want, where you want the AC to blow. I want some of my feet right now in addition to up here. And you also have the heated seats in three different levels. Further down here, you do have the drive select, which we just talked about, the drive modes the traction control on and off, the auto shut off for the engine on and off, turning that off, hazards, parking sensors, and parking assist buttons. Further down in this cave down here, you do have two USB-Cs and you have the wireless charging pad in a pretty much 45 degree angle in this area. You have more gloss black in the center console. Have a look at this gear selector. This is a very cool design of a gear selector. There's a little knob right here that you just press up we get the uh, 360 sensors. We don't have the 360 camera in this case, I don't believe. It looks like we only have the parking sensors around the car, but we do have, of course, a uh, full rear view camera for the backup camera with trajectory alliance, looking fantastic, putting it back in park. Volume controls are located right here in this. You just swivel your, your finger around this thing, and that's how you increase or decrease the volume. So it's a touchpad and buttons at the same time. Parking brake located here, 12 volt outlet, two cup holders, pretty small armrest, but again, it is an Audi A3, it is a small car. Open this up and you have a small compartment underneath. These seats, they look very thick. They're heavy bolstered seats and they're pretty comfortable as well. They're not the sportiest seats, which is totally fine on a normal A3. We do have some uh, suede on the sides with some white stitching in the middle. Looking pretty normal and standard to me, that's fine. The Audi steering wheel, thankfully, the grill is not haunting us in this A3 because we do have a round circular logo in the middle. And I do love how the, this logo is implemented here with the chamfer around it sitting inside of it. it. It just feels nice to touch. On the right side spoke, you do have the controls for the volume of the radio and you have the voice commands as well. On the left side are the controls for the gauge cluster. You can configure it, as I said, uh, as you like and have whatever you want in the center portion of the screen. Very nicely done by Audi. And I also like how they implemented the fuel gauge and the temp gauge on the very sides of this gauge cluster itself. And have a look at the housing for it, looking very nice. On the side, you have the controls for the light settings and you have a bit of a storage compartment underneath it. This also comes with the paddle, so it's going to be interesting to see how this works when we take this for a drive in just a minute. Looking at these doors, look at how robotic these look. I love the design of this. The same style of the outside uh, exterior style and comes back definitely in the doors. Have a look at this door handle, how it just continues from this uh, silver piece and then just hangs off in like a blade style and how this door handle is also very sharp but still very nice to hold and grip. Up top we do have a standard size sunroof as you can see. Last but not least, do we have a glove box in the 2023 Audi A3? Yes, we do and it is again pretty much the same size as you get in the A4 and the A5. So let's see here, jumping into the back seat behind myself at 6.1 and I do still have pretty decent legroom. These carve outs that we have in the front seat are, are bigger than we have in the A4 and A5. I think that helps with uh, the legroom. But again, I'm not sitting like this when I'm in the back seat. I usually just sit like this. And if I do that, it's totally fine back here. Headspace starting to get a little tight, but I have no problems at all unless I just tilt my head to the left because then I'm going to hit the side of it. You don't have any three zone climate control back here, so you're going to have to talk with your friends in the front seat to figure out what type of temperature you all want in the car. 
but you do have two USB-C's at the very bottom and folding this armrest down. Do we have the transformer cup holders? No, instead we get some standard looking cup holders in the cheaper A3. Okay, setting off in the 2023 Audi A3. What do we have under the hood? We have a two liter four cylinder turbocharged putting out 201 horsepower, not 200, 201, which is totally fine for this type of package. I think it suits a small sedan to have not too much power. 200 horsepower feels good because it does zero to 60 still in just 6.3 seconds, which is not bad at all. Now, the cool thing is this transmission, we do have eight speeds in most Audis these days, but this one still has a dual clutch though, but it's a seven speed. So I'm gonna feel how that feels when we, if we can put it in manual, I guess it's just pressing it down. Yep, now we're in manual, so manual two, manual one. Okay, I got the hang of it. I'm, I'm not sure this is, too happy to be in manual and let you have full control like we have in the S, S models, for example. It just doesn't feel like that so far, but we're also in stop and go traffic. So it's pretty jerky regardless. I really like this interior. As I said, it feels like Audi designers just had a lot of fun designing these things that stick out from the gauge cluster. And these are the big sharp vents, not in line at all with the passenger vents, completely different design. And if it looks really cool, I forgot we're in manual, so we're stuck in first gear there for a second. All right, we're coming on to our straight here. And let's go. All right, so 201 horsepower might be a little on the low side when you're stepping on it but it's okay i mean it's a it's a regular old a3 there is not nothing really super sporty about this specific a3 so it's totally cool it does shift very quick though still because it is after all a dual clutch automatic let's put it down into second 3500 rpm Yeah, it's a fun little car to drive. Definitely nothing to be afraid of if you uh, decide to step on the gas. Good news is it's a proper uh, Colorado car because you have the Quattro all-wheel drive rally heritage in this all-wheel drive system, which is fantastic. Audi Quattros, I don't know if you've seen these videos of uh, BMW xDrive compared to old Audi Quattros and how they do in the snow. For, for some reason, there are probably a lot of BMW videos showing BMWs being better than uh, Audis, but for some reason, most, most of these videos just show the Quattro system just plow. You can use it as a plow, even if it's an old Audi A6 Avant or something like that. So it's a proper, properly good all-wheel drive system in these new Audis. It is a small sedan, it doesn't matter. We gotta check the turning radius. Turning radius is spot on down to first gear pretty empty streets let's do one more pull right here and let's go and we're up to 60. not bad 6.3 seconds i keep coming back to the audi s3 first generation 2001 i believe it was might be wrong on the 2000 0 to 6 in 6.9 seconds. So this one is faster than the first generation Audi S3. Definitely a comfortable car. You know, the bigger the cars are, usually the more comfortable they are. Audi has done something, sprinkled some magic onto the suspension of this because it is very, very comfortable over not the best roads. Denver has surprised me when it comes to roads because they're, they're not good and there's uh, given this, there is construction going on pretty much everywhere. I hope that they will fix uh, the, the, the biggest potholes that we have going on in, in this city. But uh, the comfort in this Audi is definitely fantastic. And I still have it in dynamic. Let's put it in the comfort. So when it comes to design of Audis these days, what are your thoughts on Audis designs? Do they look maybe a little... It's like the opposite of what BMW is doing, going 
completely nuts with their lineup. No car has the same front end. A one BMW has a completely same, uh, different front end than you have in, in another BMW. There is no red line in their lineup at all. Here in Audi is the opposite. They have almost two identical looking front ends, in my opinion. And I do think, as I said, it's time for Audi to maybe come up with the next design DNA for the next generation Audi and then sprinkle some of that into their new models. And I think that's gonna come in the next two to three years. I had it in comfort for a very short bit, but it is pretty boring. So I'm gonna pop it back into dynamic. Huge thanks as always to Audi Denver for providing this gorgeous blacked out with the black optics package Audi A3 for me to review for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you're interested in this car specifically, make sure you go and check it out at audidenver.com right here or click the link down in the description. And if you enjoyed this type of videos, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.